Oh my god. How to Train Dragon 3. <laughs> I'm so excited to review this movie. Uh, sorry this movie day was a little rushed. I actually walked in about three or five minutes late to the actual movie itself. Uh, there was no trailers because it was a screening, but... Guys, oh my god, it's the final chapter of the How to Train Dragon movies. I'm speechless. I'm, <laughs> I'm not even kidding with you guys. Oh my god. Alright guys, so I'm very excited to talk about this movie. I did go see How to Train Dragon to Hidden World. I went to an early access screening where I saw the movie three weeks in advance. Uh, that's right, we don't get this movie till February, February 22nd here in the United States. Uh, the reason why I say that is because I know other territories already got this movie. Um, in theaters like last week so uh, we don't get it till another three weeks but luckily I did go see a screening for this movie and uh, you know I had the advantage not just seeing it early but getting out a review quicker out for you guys uh, so I could let you guys know what I thought about the actual movie itself because I know a lot of you guys are very curious to see what I think of not just this movie but I guess also of How Train Dragon as a whole trilogy and also before this video um, uh, or before I saw this movie, I did a video leading up to watching this movie. So I basically watched and reviewed the first two How to Train Dragon movies. Feel free to check that out if you guys want to. But anyways, uh, don't worry, this review is spoiler free. I have a lot of details in my notes of a lot of things that I really want to talk about this movie. Uh, so a little bit of the story details in this movie, you know, we have Hiccup, he is now chief and ruler of Burke, and he created a very successful and unified dragon utopia where the humans and dragons now get along. And uh, well, there is this unexpected um, appearance of a female white fairy who appears at the same time as a threatening guy who arrives at the village and attempts to take down not only just the village, but also tries to take down the dragons. So now we ha it's up to Hiccup his gang and the dragons who all must give up a battle to defeat this evil villain um now just a quick backstory i've been following this franchise for about almost half my life now now i just turned 17 uh, just a few days ago and uh this when the first how to train dragon movie came out i was only eight years old and you know i saw the first how to train dragon movie in theaters and i absolutely adored it and then i just kind of grew up with that movie and I kind of grew up with the characters as well, you know, uh, mainly Toothless, who became one of my favorite characters from any DreamWorks movie, or, you know, just in general from any animated movie. I just love Toothless that much. I actually had this Toothless towel where it was like, you know, it had like Toothless over, you could put it overhead. It was a really nice towel. I don't remember what I did to it though. But, um, you know, I, the How to Train Dragon movies are amongst my favorite DreamWorks movies alongside the Kung Fu Panda movies and I just always connected well with these movies. Now uh, I was actually really nervous for this movie. The How to Train a Dragon 3 trailers didn't really wow me outside from its beautiful visuals but the marketing I just didn't find all that good for this movie. It just made this movie look kind of just like another generic family movie and it, it just made the movie look very weak in comparison. Um, but at the same time, I had faith in DreamWorks to come back for a final run. And DreamWorks absolutely succeeded here. They knocked it out of the park. They took a huge win with this movie. And they gave us what I would say is most definitely one, not just one of DreamWorks' best franchises, but one of the best animated trilogies of all time right next to to the Toy Story movies, the Toy Story trilogy, and the Kung Fu Panda trilogy. Now, um, the story just hooks you from the moment it starts with a fun, accelerating action scene. Uh, the movie is just, you know, it's just extremely fast paced and it never once drags at all with its pacing. Uh, the story is beautifully represented here. Uh, you have a story of a lovely friendship of a guy and his dog like dragon. And this whole franchise, one thing that I noticed, uh, not just recently watching the first two movies, but now also watching this third entry, third and final entry, I realized that this franchise is about growing up. 
The characters are uh, the characters are developed and extended more in each movie, especially Hiccup. Uh, he's just given more to work with in each movie, and uh, these movies just haven't just been a coming of age story, not just for Hiccup, but also for Toothless. Uh, believe it or not, um, Toothless is given a lot to work with in this movie. Uh, you know, we have that subplot where he is giving a love interest, you know, the Light Fury, who I thought was a fun addition to the list of characters in this movie. And uh, I thought that the subplot that they had with the love interest of uh, of Toothless and the Light Fury was honestly really good. I mean, Toothless didn't feel like a side character, almost like he felt like in the second movie. But here, he actually felt like an actual character that contributes a lot with the actual story. Um, given Toothless pretty much always kind of contributed with the story in the other How to Train Dragon movies. But uh, he just feels a lot more like an actual character with more personality here. And that's what I love about this movie. They gave Toothless more of a personality where he felt more of a character, almost human-like at some points. And uh, I just adored that about this movie. And that's something that this movie flawlessly does. Um, and it's also nice seeing some of the returning characters, you know, the human characters, such as, you know, obviously Hiccup and Astrid and some of their other friends. They're all fun. They're all very entertaining to see back uh, brought into the big screen. And I enjoyed every one of these characters back. Now, there is a new villain here. His name is Grimmel. And from the beginning, he's clearly a big threat. And man, he is just a great villain. Um, now, personally, I kind of prefer Drago as a villain from the second movie. Just a tad more, just because I found Drago to actually be a lot scarier of a villain. And especially with what he did to mind control dragons. And that movie, I thought was actually... I thought it was, it was great. But uh, Grimmel here... If we're talking about an actual technical character as an actual villain, they absolutely kill it with Grimmel. And he definitely does become the best villain of the franchise. And I absolutely loved him as not just a threatening character, but just overall as a villain. He really worked very, very well in this movie. And I'm, I'm surprised. Um, and also with Grimmel as the villain, the stakes are bigger. The characters are put through some, you know, bigger danger. And the characters will face challenges and even consequences. And that's why I'd say that Grandma is definitely the best villain in the franchise. Because he puts the characters in these situations where you're just kind of stuck with the characters thinking, you know, if I were in their situation, what would I do? And that's what I absolutely love about, you know, a good villain. The fact that he puts the characters in this very difficult position. And that's what they do with Grimmel in this movie. And again, he is just the best villain in this franchise. Um, also, the animation is obviously awesome. And, you know, each the animation in each and every one of these movies just gets more richer, more detailed, more realistic. Uh, like the first one with its animation back for when it was released in 2010, it was uh, it was ahead of its time, the animation. But, you know, rewatching the movie just a few days ago, the animation is a tad outdated. And the second one, look, the second one had great animation, but compared to the animation with this movie, the second one, the second movie's animation just looks more cartoonish in style compared to the animation in this movie, because the animation in this movie, it feels more mature. It looks more realistic, more detailed. Uh, and the animation in this movie is just absolutely flawless. Now, uh, the visual styles are also bright. Uh, they're vivid. They're beautiful to look at. Uh, there's just so much life brought into these visuals in this movie. And, you know, this is a movie that I definitely must watch on 4K. Not just for the animation, but for the visuals alone. Um, and also, no spoilers here, but oh my god. The payoff, the, the the payoff, the last 10 minutes of this thing made me cry hard twice in just 10 minutes. I cried twice in the last 10 minutes of this movie. And uh, it, 
that's mainly because I've been, again, growing up with this franchise for almost a decade now, and I had a very emotional connection with these characters, and what they do with the characters at the end is just lovely. It's a beautiful send-off to these characters, and fans of this franchise will leave the theater sad, but satisfied, and just the tears are just absolutely real in this movie. Now, uh, How to Train Dragon 3, The Hidden World, again, I didn't love the marketing, but when it came to the actual movie itself, guys, I'm not lying about this, it's definitely one of the best animated movies out there right now. Probably one of the best animated movies of the decade, I'd definitely say it definitely joins the Lego movie. And recently, uh, Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse has one of the best animated movies of the decade, at least in my opinion. But DreamWorks just completely killed it here. Uh, and also with what DreamWorks has been giving us recently, DreamWorks has been giving us some very cartoonish movies recently, and I wasn't a huge fan of that. But now that they actually give us a movie with grounded storytelling, uh, visually beautiful, flawless animation what else can i ask for from dreamworks uh with that being said i'm gonna give how to train dragon 3 my highest rating which is you know best of the best and i'm gonna give this movie an a plus there you guys have it my official review for how to train your dragon 3 the hidden world I cannot wait for this movie to release and another officially release here in the United States in another few weeks um, so I could see this movie in IMAX because I'm sure that this movie is going to look awesome in IMAX. Uh, not just the animation but also the visuals and the sound is going to be much louder for those action scenes. Um, I, I cannot wait to, uh, I cannot wait for the IMAX tickets to go on sale because I'm going to get them day one. But yeah, so far, my favorite movie of the year, I'm sure it's going to stay as my favorite movie of the year for a while. Of course, I do think there's going to be things that will outbeat it out of that space. But anyways, uh, have you guys seen How to Train Dragon 3? Did you guys go to the preview screening that I went to? Or are you guys lucky enough to live in other places where the movie already officially released? Uh, and if not, are you guys excited to watch this movie when it officially hits theaters on February 22nd? If you guys are, let me know in the comment section down below. As always, thanks so much for watching. Please like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys later. Bye.